if you're asking me if I uh, what kind of chocolate I eat, I would say I eat normally chocolate which is not produced in uh, where the cocoa is from Africa. So I mainly buy chocolate where the cocoa is from uh, South America, Latin America, uh, because then I know that it's not made by uh, child labor and the quality of the cocoa is uh, a bit higher. So it's also the quality is better. Can you please name the brands of chocolates that you definitely know that they are involved in child trafficking? I think um, the thing is that 40% of all cocoa worldwide comes from one country and that's Ivory Coast. And so almost everybody, all the big brands need to have cocoa from Ivory Coast. And Ivory Coast is also the country with the worst kind of child labor trafficking of children into the plantation in Ivory Coast. So in terms of brands, I think you, you won't be able to buy chocolate from the biggest one like uh, Nestle or uh, Kraft Food or the big brands. They cannot say that they make chocolate um, which is not made by um, child labor. They can't do that guarantee. Uh, so that's, that's mainly what I can say about the brands. And how did you come to the idea to make this documentary? How did it start? Well, um, actually it was just because I'm a journalist, so I, I'm quite uh, curious about uh, how stuff uh, in the world, um, uh, why, um, uh, for instance, uh, a shirt costs uh, three pounds when I know that the production of it is uh, quite higher. So uh, I went to my uh, local supermarket as a consumer buying a, a chocolate bar and in the in the supermarket there were seven chocolate bars with different flavor some with nuts some with white chocolate one with the um, with the dark chocolate and one of the seven had a uh, fair trade uh, mark it was on uh, one of the seven chocolate bars and I was just curious why is one fair trade what about the six others are uh, then they are they um, uh, unfair trade? So that was actually the start, the beginning of my research. I was just curious if one is fair trade, is then the other one unfair trade? So I did my investigation and I realized that no one actually had done anything uh, about um, the, the chocolate industry and about the labor uh, conditions um, in the chocolate industry, uh, just some uh, university reports claiming and NGOs claiming that there is a big issue. So that was actually the start of my uh, investigation. And why do you think the legislation doesn't protect these children? How how does it work? Why? Mm, yeah, it's you know it's a very big business. Uh, the demand of chocolate is big. It's like. Um, the black gold if you like. It's something everybody eats. Uh, it doesn't matter if it's China, Russia, uh, Europe, US, it's a big market. So regulations um, do not work because people just demand chocolate despite that it's produced by child labor. So I think if you have to have any regulations, I think you need to force the chocolate manufacturers to have a label saying, like the uh, cigarette package, this is produced by child labor. Then I think you maybe will see some changes. Then people know, okay, um, I know that a cigarette kills me, but I like one. Okay, this chocolate bar is made by child labor, but I'm starving, I need a chocolate. So that's, I think, a way to do it. You will, of course, find a lot of people not smoking because now they know it kills you. And I think with the chocolate, if we had a label saying this is um, uh, produced by child labor, you probably will see that people would change. And 
then the manufacturers will change because then they will say okay we can't have this label we need to have one where it not say anything about child labor but a free labor uh, chocolate bar uh, do you think these children who work on these chocolate farms do they have any choice i mean do they make money for the families or if they would be taken away this opportunity to work maybe they will die from hunger at all or do we just create working places? Well, yeah, I, un I understand the discussion about uh, poverty because at the end of the day, of course, the chocolate manufacturers and the uh, labor um, is about poverty. Why do the plantation owners need to use child labor? That's because of the price of cocoa. They do not have any money to have a uh, proper uh, uh, staff so they go to um, uh, the neighbor countries and uh, buy a child for free like it's a very small amount of money um, and uh, the thing is uh, if, 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 if you said well this is a family where you have some children working in the plantation that's how it works in many countries. That's a culture where the family has child children and they help. But this is not the case. The case I have done is where you actually need cheap, cheap labor. And the cheapest you can get is children. Because you do not have to pay them. Then they are slaves. So that's the big difference. Then you could ask, okay, but if they were not in the plantation, what were they doing then? Probably nothing, because they come from the worst and the most, uh, the area where it's the, the biggest poverty in the world. But do we like a society, do we like a world where we need to explore, um, have exploitation of uh, children? Well, I don't think so. I think we need to put every children in school if you have the children in school, then you get a small um, education. If you get an education, then you can get a work. That's what poverty is about. Poverty is if you do not put the children to school, then we will get more poverty. And in the case with those children, the parents doesn't afford to put them into school. So we need as a rich, country, real rich countries need to help the poor countries to get the children into school. That's mainly the most important things we should do if we like to end poverty. Otherwise, we will have modern slavery. What personally shocked you? Because definitely you've made your research before you started filming, but did you discover anything that you didn't expect to find? The most the biggest shock I actually got was I went the first time I went to Mali um, in West Africa uh, to Bamako the capital um, we went to an office an NGO I can't say the name of the NGO but it's a big well-known NGO helping people in those area we went into the office as a part of the research and asked oh please can you tell us where is um, the trafficking of the local children? Where is it taking part? You know what they said? Um, we do not have any trafficked uh, children anymore. That's not an issue anymore. So the guy I was traveling with, a local fixer, he said, Mickey, let's go. I will find them for you. Then we drove two hours to a big um, bus station and suddenly after less than 30 minutes the first children were actually trafficked they were going with traffickers and i was so surprised that it was at that level it was huge and we had a international ngo saying there's no problems anymore the thing is which surprised me is it's just in your face you can't say that, well, 
We, we, we know about the problem that it's not huge problems. In fact, it's a huge problem. I was in Ivory Coast three months ago to make a follow-up film. We went into random plantations full of children from Burkina Faso, trafficked from Burkina Faso into the plantation. They were working as slaves. That was three months ago, 2017. What effect has this film made? How the CEOs reacted? Did, did it have any impact? Well, um, I think before I did my uh, films, um, the public didn't know anything about this issue. You couldn't find any information uh, on the websites, uh, on the chocolate manufacturers' websites. Today, if you go Google and you go into Mars or uh, Nestle, you will find cocoa plants for children and how um, they fight against trafficking of children and everything. So, in terms of uh, changes, uh, the public now know more. That's the biggest change. If you're asking me about the changes in the plantation, in the industry, Unfortunately, and I really I feel sad about saying this, um, it doesn't seem to be big changes. And if a uh, customer sees chocolate, how would you understand that this chocolate was produced by child? Are there any indicators? You will always find a mark on your chocolate saying where uh, the cocoa is from. So, if the cocoa, if this chocolate bar in the supermarket is from Ecuador, believe me, then they write Ecuador because they know that chocolate from Ecuador, Brazil, or other Latin American countries. So, if, it, if you take a random one without any sign of the origin country, it's from Ivory Coast. Even Ghana have a stamp saying Ghana. Because Ghana is, is not having the same problem with uh, with uh, child labor. It's more or less something which is in Ivory Coast, which is the biggest country of um, of exporting of cocoa. That's the main uh, resource of exporting uh, from uh, from Ivory Coast. And I do not say that the Ivorian government doesn't do anything. They try to do, but they cannot do this alone. They need to have the big, big uh, companies like Nestle to be behind this, to pay back some money to the local communities so we can have some schools, so the children can go into schools and we can get rid of all the trafficked children. There is a lot of children from Mali, from Niger, from Burkina Faso, Togo, Benin, working as slaves in Ivory Coast. Mm -hmm. What difficulties did you face when you were working on this film? Um, a lot of corruption, of course. Um, and But that's just one of the, you could say, one of the problems you're facing in in Africa, but it's not an African problem. You will find it in in, in Russia and in, in a lot of money, uh, a lot of countries. Uh, uh, corruption is always really difficult to work with, um, and of course, digging into a so big a um, a, um, a business like this, um, you need to be careful not to get in trouble um, because you can get uh, arrested just for doing your job and you will be able to come out um, that easy um, so uh, of course and because this is a big business you could disappear um, there is one journalist still uh, his body has never been found and he disappeared in 2006, uh, Guy André Kiva, he was doing um, 
a uh, investigation in this business and suddenly he just disappeared. Do you think that Nestle and other companies, they're absolutely aware of what is happening and just do not want to spend money on dealing with this problem? Or they pretend that they do not understand that it, these cases take place? If they do not understand, they are more stupid than you can think of. And I know that they are not stupid. They know everything about this. Nestle has been present in Ivory Coast for more than 50 years. They have a huge headquarter in, 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 in Abidjan, in uh, Ivory Coast. Uh, Mars is present, Cargill is present, ADM, all the big manufacturers, they are in the country. It would take them two hours drive into the bush and they would face this. They know, of course they know. Why do they not do anything then? I think uh, until I did the films, they were living without any problems. Now they know there is problems and now that's why they have built up some new systems to um, fight against this problem. But as I said before, in terms of big changes, nothing has happened. It's a huge... Um, Money. Nestle is uh, the biggest uh, food company in the world. So, and Mandeles Craft uh, Food, uh, number two, three in the world. So, we are talking about serious money. And of course, Nestle do not have a a, a good reputation uh, with water, with the uh, uh, dairy milk for children, and the chocolate. So, and, and what people do not realize is Nestle also own Nescafe and Nespresso. Nespresso, which is so popular. Um, imagine how the coffee in the Nespresso is produced. I don't know, but maybe someone should investigate the coffee industry. The coffee industry has huge problems too. I'm not saying that the coffee in the Nespresso is uh, child labor or, or poverty, but someone should investigate how the situation is because that's the biggest success right now for Nestle.